Um, so if the Sovereign and Maiden were originally boot-up programs for Lenigus, what about now? Even with the Forbidden Zone in ruins and the Renis Alma stolen, Lenigus is functioning fine. If it needed us before, it doesn't appear to now. First they lumber you with a position you never asked for, then you're discarded like you're nothing? Who the hell do they think they are? More importantly, who do they think we are? We might not even factor into their list of concerns. I just hope everyone on Lenigus is safe. Worst comes to worst, Lenigus is equipped with a large number of starships the people can escape in. As long as the whole satellite doesn't suddenly explode or something, they should be fine. Wait, explode? In any case, if we're truly going to make a difference, it's on Rena we're needed, not Lenigus. The people there will be fine, I'm sure of it. Right. your answer for me we want to ask something first you're asking us to fight an entire planet how exactly do you expect us to do that you must have something up your sleeve or else you wouldn't put us up to it the great astral spirit is an immense being but its actual will does not run throughout its entire body rather its will is derived from the core which supports the rest of the body and is where its strength is most densely concentrated therefore if you destroy the core, the Great Spirit shall become unable to maintain sentience and return to being ordinary astral energy. And how are we supposed to destroy that core? By using the Renus Alma. <sighs> you will also need the assistance of both the Sovereign and the Maiden. They are our best tools for suppressing and controlling astral energy. Using their powers, the Maiden shall seal the great astral spirit within her body, and the Sovereign shall wield the power of the Renis Alma to destroy it. Hold on. That sounds a lot like what Shion described before. Yeah, killing herself to take out the thorns with her. She was actually right all along. By my calculations, your powers combined should be sufficient to destroy the great astral spirit and disperse its energy widely enough to make it difficult to reform. What will happen to the Maiden once we manage to beat the Great Astral Spirit? Any matter contained within the Field of Destruction shall be erased. So it really will kill me. This method is the most simple one available to destroy the Great Spirit, and is therefore our most reliable option. What are our other options? There is little reason to consider alternative courses of action when the most optimal among them is so clear. You don't get it. I promised Xion that she wouldn't die. That we'd save the world without needing to sacrifice her. We didn't fight this whole time just to give up on her at the very end. If there's any other way to take out the Great Spirit, I want to hear it. This plan shall lead to the fewest losses in preserving your world. Abandoning it is irrational. That's... It is vital that you proceed with this plan. A part of Rena's great astral spirit already resides within her. <sighs> Three hundred years ago, the great spirit descended upon Lenigus in an attempt to assume direct control of the spirit channeling ceremony. We have reason to believe the great spirit left part of itself behind and that it now resides in the Maiden. Which would make Alfin's earlier hypothesis correct. That part inside the Maiden belongs to the Core, and can be used by the Great Astral Spirit to revive itself. So long as it remains, it will be all but impossible to fully eradicate the Great Spirit. That is why it is necessary for it to be vanquished only once it is whole. Without the Maiden's direct control over the Great Spirit, 
Attacking it is futile, and will only serve to strengthen it. No. <sighs> Wait. Naori said that the Renis Alma can suppress the self-realization of astral energy, and that the thorns could be neutralized by placing them in it. If so, can't the same also be done to the Great Spirit, seeing as the thorns are simply part of it? Well, can it? It is true that the Renis Alma is capable of what you suggest, and could contain the Great Astral Spirit. Yes! However, doing so requires fine control on the level of the Spirit Channeling Ceremony, considering that the Renis Alma was previously lost when that ceremony failed. I cannot allow it. Its uncertainty is simply too great. What does that mean for us if you won't allow it? Your starship will not be restored, and you will all be unable to leave here. Why, you? <sighs> Fine, then. I'd rather stay here and rot than do it your way. Alfin? Whatever we do, if we mess up, Dana's screwed. The Great Spirit will destroy it. If you're fine letting that happen, and we have nothing to gain either way, then I'd rather do nothing. We want to stop Dana from getting destroyed. We want to save it. But not if it means having to sacrifice one of us in the process. If all you're going to do is sit back and watch us where it's safe, then quit ordering us around and shut up! Alvin. What you say is irrational. Be that as it may, I shall accede to your demand. You'll agree? I am an observer. The Sovereign, Maiden, and Renis Alma are my species' greatest achievement. I wish to see how well they work against the Great Spirit in light of our demise by its hands. But what are we supposed to do about the Renis Alma? One of your buddies ran off with it back on Lenigus. It is likely that the Renis Alma is with the Great Spirit, functioning as a catalyst for it to receive Dana's astral energy. So our only option to retrieve it is to head straight for the Great Spirit and take it back? According to my observations, the astral energy is most densely concentrated in the center of Rena, where the Great Spirit's core is located. So right in the middle of that giant flower then. I have one more question. You've said that Rena's great astral spirit is already integrated with the planet. What will happen to Rena once it vanishes? Without the will of the great spirit, Rena is predicted to collapse. Even in such a scenario, the energy will disperse, and the great spirit will likely not reform. So you're saying that even if we manage to beat the great spirit without destroying it, We'll still be in danger? Likely, the collapse will occur in stages. It is recommended that you all escape before the final stage. Man, I wish that thing would tell it to us straight for once. Havrek 35 and the others have gotten used to hypothesizing from afar is all. Fix our starship. We're going to Rena. Excellent. But I want to make one thing clear. We're doing this for ourselves, to protect what matters to us. We're not doing it for your sake, or because you told us to. Remember that. It matters little to me. The end result shall be the same. Repair work on your starship has commenced. You'll have to wait until it's finished. Man, is it too much to ask for Hever 35 to talk like a normal person? I swear I can feel my brain starting to fry after listening to all that complicated stuff. Don't worry. I think we're mostly done with him. Now all we have to do is rest up and wait. Once the Fall Nights is good to go again, we'll be taking off for Rena right away. Is the Renis Alma really our only hope against the Great Spirit? There has to be another way, right? 
Xion's Fire Master Core was able to suppress astral energy to prevent it from gaining sentience, right? Couldn't we make use of that somehow? I'm not sure. In small doses, maybe. And with the amount of energy we're talking about here. Back in Calaglia, the Blazing Sword was able to take in a whole spirit vessel's worth of energy. If it has the capacity to manage that, it can do this, right? Except after it absorbed the energy, it ended up releasing it all moments later, remember? Let's not forget, it nearly killed you. Besides, this is the great spirit we're talking about, not a paltry vessel. Even if I could use the Master Core, your body wouldn't be able to take the strain of channeling that much energy. Hevrecht 35 didn't mention it, and it did not seem the type to skimp on details. So assuming it's even possible, the chances are slim to none. You're probably right. You still thinking about what the scientists told us? About where Renans really come from? I am, but not for myself. You're worried about the future of the Renan people. The fact that our people have been the same this whole time will only give the Danans further reason to resent us. But you still intend to confront this truth head on, don't you? Well... I did declare that I would live my life for the living, and not the dead. Even as I dream of retirement, I shall remain dedicated to the cause. I'm sure you'll do great. Now that I think about it, I don't believe I've ever heard you criticize or reproach us Renans even once. I'm no saint. I have skeletons in my closet too. There was definitely a time when I hated Renans for who they were. I hated them just for being Renan. But you changed that, Dohalim. You gave me an opportunity to see them in a different light. Thanks to your reforms, we were able to stand next to Renans not as slaves, but as equals for the first time in our lives. Of course, I'm sure there were some Renans who still hated us on the inside. But we knew that not all of you were like that. There were those of you who were good. And that was a start. When it comes down to it, Renans are just people. They can be good or bad, just like Danans. That is, in essence, the heart of your approach, isn't it? That we're all people. Yeah, it is. When you can pull someone aside and talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, then you have the chance to come to an understanding. But as soon as you stereotype, that chance goes away, and you stop thinking of them as people that you can relate to. I understand what you're saying. But we're talking about massive numbers of Renans and Danans alike. Realistically speaking, surely they won't all be able to get along. Even if we end up butting heads with one person, maybe we'll find better luck among their friends. If we can build a society that works like that, that'll be something worth nurturing and protecting. So you wish for people to form real bonds and do away with the hierarchy outright? to deal with one another as humans, and nothing more. That's the ideal future you hope to see when this is all over? Yes, I do. I think it would make for a fine tribute to my brother's legacy. Though, that said, I would be doing it for the people of the future first and foremost. Do you still plan to return to Lenigus when this is over? Indeed I do. I don't know whether I'll be able to reside in Lenigus proper, however. My first order of business may be to find somewhere to live. You'll always have a home in Menencia, you know. 
As I shall ever keep in mind. Well, if you ever need a helping hand, don't hesitate to come get me. I'll always be there for you, Doe. Did you just... <laughs> Never mind. Thank you, Kisara. I appreciate your patience as I work all this out. Don't even mention it. And really, when you think about it, now that we know the two of us aren't so different after all, don't you think that brings down a barrier that used to be between us? <sighs> you know... I hadn't actually thought of it that way before. <laughs> but I do like the sound of it. Yeah, I think I do too. Hey, why'd you call me here? Was there something you wanted to talk about? <sighs> well... If everything we've heard about the Great Spirit is true, then we're getting close to our final battle. So I wanted to apologize while I can. Apologize? For what? I was being real stupid before, about whether Dana's will had been controlling us and all that. I get why you're angry now. Anybody would be if something they trusted was being questioned. So, I'm sorry, Runwell. Really. I should have kept my mouth shut. No, Law. Honestly, I think you might have been onto something. Of course you were worried. Who wouldn't be if they found out there might be some invisible force pulling our strings this whole time? But you... you really trust Dana's will, don't you? Is it because you can sense it a lot more than the rest of us? Because you can understand it? Yeah, I think that might be part of it. But I think I also want to believe it's good. Believe? Remember how I used to really resent coming from a family of mages? Yeah, of course. Because you were always on the run and had to live in hiding. When we rescued Zephyr and... And I finally decided to come along with you all. Something changed inside me. It was the first time I felt like my powers had any meaning. Even if that meaning was only helping you guys fight. Then, when I felt Dana's will, I was overwhelmed by how vast and warm it was. It made me want to believe my powers were made to connect with it. It made me believe I had a bigger purpose. So that's why you hope it doesn't turn out to be bad. You almost need it to be kind. Yeah. Well, all right. Then I promise I'll lay off bad-mouthing it. You will? There's no way for me to know for sure one way or the other, right? But you trust it, Rinwell, and that's enough for me. So I'll trust it because you do. Uh... Remember what I said about neither planet's great spirit reaching us here? Hmm? Yeah? That's not quite true. I can feel just a little bit of Rena's inside you and everyone else. Uh, you... what? I sensed it when we first got here. It's a really small amount, so it doesn't feel like it has a will of its own. But I think that's how Dana's energy probably is too. So you're saying there's a little bit of Dana's will inside each of us? In a way, doesn't that mean we're all Dana's will? What? Well, like you said, unless Dana's energy comes together, it has no will. So if we all have a little bit of Dana's astral energy inside us... Yeah, maybe... Everett 35 might know the answer. But, you know what? I don't need to ask it. My will is my own. I fight for who I want to fight for. That's who I am now. Who I've become. So thanks, Renwell, for sharing that with me.
To be honest, the only reason I was suspicious of Dana's will... Well, I mean, it mostly was... I feel like you and I had grown apart lately, and I was worried it was because... Huh? Uh, never mind. <clears throat> Nothing. Just forget about it. Huh? Uh, no. What were you saying? Saying? I don't remember Come saying on. anything. Now you won't tell me what you were no, thinking? No, that's not what I'm saying. Then spit it out already. Um... <laughs> you sure you don't want to get some rest? I can't. I've got too much on my mind. Especially knowing how close our last battle is. How are you doing, Xion? Same as you, still trying to absorb everything. Remember when it was so simple, we were only fighting all the lords on Dana? <laughs> all of that feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Ages and ages ago. Everything that's happened since we first met. So many fights, so much chaos, so many wonderful people. If I hadn't run into you that day, well, I wouldn't have met all of you. I never would have held the blazing sword or looked for something more. I wouldn't have my memories back. I'd still be a faceless slave, and like as not long dead. Hey, Alfin. I want you to promise me something. Yeah? If we can't find the Renis Alma, there's something I want you to do. Like Hevrecht 35 said, the only way we can end the Great Spirit for good is to go after both the main body in Rena and the thorns in me. I need you to promise me, Alfin, that if for some reason we can't get the Renis Alma back, you'll use the Blazing Sword to destroy the Great Spirit, and me along with it. Huh? It's true the Blazing Sword may not have the strength of the Renis Alma. But it's taken us this far. It's slain lords and beasts. At the very least, it has to be worth a try. You can't be serious. Have you forgotten everything Listen, that we- the Great Spirit isn't just our problem. It's a threat to our entire world. Renans and Danans alike. We don't know what's going to happen when we face it, but we need to be prepared for anything. We can't second-guess ourselves when the time comes. I promise you I'm not planning on going anywhere. I'm prepared to fight with absolutely everything I've got. But if it comes down to it, I need you to be prepared too. should know that I'm not going to give up on you, Shion. I'm going to fight this until the very end. I hope you can forgive me for that. Alfin. Okay, I understand. And I'll forgive you. touched me. Hmm? My thorns made any contact a mistake no one would ever make twice. After they'd seen what could happen, fear would always linger behind their eyes. In my entire life, I never had someone willingly reach out to me. But when you reached out to me and gently took my hand, you didn't react at all. 
It was so easy for you. I don't have words for the shock I felt in that moment. That's because I couldn't feel pain back then. Even once you could, though, you still chose to keep reaching out to me. And when you did, I felt this warmth that I had never known before. But still, I hate having to see you suffer through it every time you do. You won't have to worry about that for much longer. You think so? I do, because I... Shiona, I, uh... No. You can tell me once my thorns are gone. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah. Everybody get enough rest? We ready for this? Yeah, we should probably get moving. Agreed. Can't stand around waiting all day. Our task is relatively straightforward. We need only to send down to Rena, defeat the Great Spirit, and restore stability to both worlds. We're fighting for a new future for both Dana and Rena. Right. We've come this far. We will save our worlds. That's a promise. Then let's go, everybody. We've got one last wall to tear down. Repairs on your starship are complete. Everything is in working order. Is that you, Hevrek 35? You can see us from where you are? I can. I can see anywhere within the bounds of Dake Faisal. Sounds like someone's a peeping Tom. Maybe we should give Hevrek 35 a break. It has been stuck in this tiny facility for a very, very long time. I have unlocked all functions on your starship. You can now make use of its warp drive. Warp drive? Wait, you mean like what the Red Women used on us? What brought us here? It's possible that the Red Women may have found a way to activate it on the starship. They are Helganquil, after all. Using the warp drive, you should be able to breach Rena's atmosphere without being detected. Wait, should? You'll need to be careful. Due to the force field surrounding Rena, the ship will be unable to go any further than the surface of the planet. So, once we reach the shell, it appears we'll have to infiltrate the core by foot. Understood. We gotta go all the way down just... walking? Will all the Helganquil go back to normal once we defeat the Great Spirit? I have a strange feeling we're going to have to fight them before this is all over. The extinction of my people is inevitable at this stage. As such, it would be illogical to risk the success of the mission in a vain attempt to save my kind. Hmm. We understand. Can't that thing lighten up a bit? Everything it says seems to be about what's illogical. Well, come on, Doe. <clears throat> Hold up. Did you just... You heard the lady. Get going. I have one last question. What? As Sovereign, your identification number indicates that you are well past your predicted life expectancy. Similarly, the Maiden lacks any identification number, as her function should have been rendered unnecessary. Despite this, the two of you continue to exist. Why? This because others have entrusted this to us. Over the years, many people have come together and sworn to see this through to the end. You mean it is because of multiple chance interactions? The likelihood of such events is statistically improbable. Why have you two continued to persist under these conditions? It's hard to explain. To be honest, I don't think it's something that an observer could understand. All right, time to get back on the Fall Nights.
It would appear that our Helganquil host really has fulfilled its end of the bargain. You know what that means. Time to go to Rena. I guess this means we should give that warp drive a spin. There's nothing here. This weird ocean we're surrounded by just stretches out everywhere. Is this really where the Helganquil come from? I don't sense even a trace of astral energy. This world is... dead. Then this must be the Hollowing. You mean to tell me this whole world? The entire ocean is... that stuff? And it's covering everything. The entire planet. This is what the Great Spirit does. After it depleted this planet of every last speck of astral energy, it went after Dana. So arresting, this world of doom. Back in its day, Rena was probably just as vibrant as Dana is. But after being robbed of its astral energy for so long, those days are gone and past. This is all that will remain. So the Great Spirit took everything. It stole energy not just from living beings, but the land, the sea, everything. And it bound the Helganquil in servitude until their whole world was nothing but this. And by the looks of it, that's how it remains to this day. A world of death and emptiness. With nothing left here to consume, the Great Spirit turned its sights on Dana, looking for another host. You're saying if we don't stop it, this is what Dana's going to look like? We can be sure that even these few remaining remnants of Ren and life will not be spared in the end. If the oblivion and darkness both Shion and Naori saw comes to pass, Nothing will survive. It looks like we can climb down from there. Let's take a look.